French and Fun by David Adler. A fraction is a part of something. We use fractions all the time. Two fourths is equivalent to one half. Six eighths is more than five eighths. One eighth is less than five eighths. One fourth is larger than one eighth. Three eighths is larger than one eighth. I'm eight and a half. I'm seven and a half. I'm eight and three fourths. When someone says she is eight and a half years old, she's using a fraction. She is saying that she's a fraction, a part of a year, more than eight. When you share a granola bar with a friend, you are using fractions too. Each of you is getting only a fraction, a part of the bar. I'm 21 and a half in dog years. Each time you eat a slice of pizza, you are eating a fraction, a part of the pie. Most often pizza pies are cut into eight slices, into eight equal parts. Each slice is one of those eight equal parts. Each slice is one eighth of the pie. Remember the denominator is the sections. So the denominator of this pizza is eight. If you eat one slice, you are eating one eighth of the pie. If you eat two slices, you are eating two eighths of the pie. You are eating Two of eight slices. Two of eight equal parts. One eight. One is the numerator, eight is the denominator. In the fraction one eight, the top number, the one, is the numerator. The bottom number is the denominator. Each fraction has a numerator and a denominator, a top number and a bottom number. This tells us that this number is a fraction. Now let's do some pizza math. It would teach you about fractions. To do pizza math, you will need three paper plates all the same size, a pencil, a ruler, and red, green, and blue crayons. With the pencil, mark the center of each plate. Using the ruler, draw a straight line through the mark from one edge of the plate to the other. The lines you drew divided each plate into two equal parts. Each part is one half of the plate. If on your plates one part is larger than the other, it is probably because your marks were not in the exact centers of the plate. On one plate, write one half in each of the two parts with the red crayon shade in one part, one half of the plate. This is one half. This represents one half. If the other part of the plate was shaded, this will represent a whole, two over two, which equals one but only one half of this plate is shaded. On another plate, draw a second line from one edge to the other and through the center mark. Draw it so you divide the plate into four equal parts. Each part is one fourth of the plate. Write one fourth in each of the four parts of the plate with the red crayon. Shading one part, 
one fourth of the plate. So if we shaded one fourth of the plate, we see that one fourth is smaller than one half. If we shaded another one fourth, we see that one fourth plus one fourth equals two fourths, and that is equivalent, two fourths is equivalent to one half. On the third plate, draw a second line through the center of the plate. Divide it into four equal parts. Next, draw two more lines through the center of the plate. Divide it into a total of eight equal parts. Each part is one eighth of the plate. Write one eighth in each of the eight parts of the plate with the red crayon shade in one part. One eighth of the plate. So if you notice, one eighth is even smaller than one fourth. If you shade in another one eighth, you will have two eight, which is equivalent to one four. If you shade in all four, one eight plus one eight plus one eight plus one eight, which equals four eighths, you will recognize that four eighths is equivalent to one half because you're shading the whole top of the plate. This is one half, one fourth, and one eighth. Now look at the three plates. Pretend each of the plates is a pizza pie. Pretend each red section is a slice of pizza. Which slice is the largest? One half, one four, or one eighth? I hope you all chose one half. Looking at the picture, we can tell that one half is larger than one fourth. It is also larger than one eighth. Which slice is the smallest? Looking at the picture, we can easily see that one eighth is the smallest. What happens to a fraction as the denominator, the bottom number changes? As the denominator gets larger, the fraction gets smaller. I can look at this picture as evidence. The denominator A is larger than the denominator 4. It is also larger than the denominator 2. But 1 8 is the smaller piece of pizza. As you cut the pie into more and more slices, each piece of slice gets smaller is smaller. When the grit with the green crayon shade in two sections of the third plate, the two sections should be next to each other. You have shaded in two eighths of the plate. With the blue crayon shade in three sections of the plate, the three sections should be next to each other. You have shaded in three eighths of the plate. That's three eighths, two eighths, and one eighth. How many eighths are shaded? Blue red and green. Six eighths. We have two eighths left 
over. If you pretend that the plate is a pizza pie, it's clear that there is more pizza in the blue section than in the green section and more in the green than in the red. Three eighths is more than two eighths or one eighth. Two eighths is more than one eighth. What happens to a fraction as the numerator, the top number gets larger. As the numerator gets larger, the fraction gets larger. The numerator is getting larger and the fraction is getting larger. Now that you know about fractions, you can find the weight of some things that weigh almost nothing at all. You can find the weight of a penny, a nickel, or a dime. To weigh them, you will need a scale like a diet or post-it stick scale, a scale that will register as little as one ounce. You will also need a lot of pennies, nickels, and dimes. How much does a penny weigh? If you put one penny on the scale, it seems to weigh nothing at all. Add a penny. Keep adding pennies until the scale registers one ounce. How many pennies did it take? Take the pennies off the scale and do the same thing with nickels. Take the nickels off the scale and do the same thing with dimes. On my scale, 11 pennies together weigh one ounce. Each penny weighs one eleventh of an ounce. The question is, how much does each penny, nickel, or dime weigh? Six nickels weigh one ounce. Each nickel weighs one-sixth of an ounce. Thirteen dimes weigh one ounce. One-thirteenth. Each dime weighs one-thirteenth of an ounce. Notice the denominator is how many pieces? 13 dimes. Which coin weighs the most? The nickel is the heaviest of the three coins. The smaller the bottom number of a fraction, the denominator, the larger the fraction. One sixth is more than one eleventh or one thirteenth. Which coin weighs the least? The dime is the lightest coin. The larger the bottom number of a fraction, the denominator, the smaller the fraction. One thirteen is less than one eleven or one six. One thirteen is less than one eleven and one six. Now, get some tissues, envelopes, and pencils. How much does each tissue weigh? If you put just one tissue on the scale, it seems to weigh nothing at all. Keep adding tissues until the scale registers one ounce. How many tissues together weigh one ounce? That number is your denominator. How much does each tissue weigh? How much does each envelope weigh? How much does each pencil weigh? Which weighs the most, a tissue, an envelope, or a pencil? Which weighs the least? Sometimes it's hard to tell if one fraction is more or less than another. Sometimes even though two fractions look different, with different numerators and denominators, they are really the same. To learn about fractions that look different, but are really the same, you will need graph paper, a pencil, a ruler, and a crayon. Use your ruler, draw three rectangles on the graph paper. Make each rectangle the same size, four boxes long and two boxes wide four boxes long and two 
boxes wide. What would be the area? Even though we're talking about fractions. Four boxes long and two boxes wide. Area equals length times width. So four times two equals eight. The area will be eight. Back to fractions. Divide the first rectangle into two equal parts, into halves, with a crayon shade in one half of the first rectangle. Divide the second rectangle into four equal parts, one fourth, shade in two fourths of the second rectangle. Divide the third rectangle into eight equal parts. One eighth, shade in four eighths of the third rectangle. One shaded, two shaded, four shaded. What do you notice? Compare the shaded sections of each rectangle. They should look the same. One half, two fourth, and four eighth are equal fractions. Coins can also teach you about fractions. There are four quarters in a dollar. Each quarter is one fourth of a dollar. There are 20 nickels in a dollar. Each nickel is one twentieth of a dollar. There are a hundred pennies in a dollar. Each penny is one one hundredth of a dollar. It all equals one whole. One quarter is one fourth of a dollar is twenty five cents. So four quarters equal a dollar. Five nickels are five twentieth of a dollar. They're twenty five cents. Twenty five pennies are twenty five over one hundred or twenty five hundredths of a dollar. They're twenty five cents too. One four five twentieth. 25 one hundred are equal fractions. There are lots of other equal fractions. Now that you know about fractions, start looking for them. When a glass is only partly filled with juice, only a fraction of the glass is filled. When you have read one of many chapters in a book you have read only a part just a fraction of the book keep on the lookout for fractions they're everywhere one half and two fourths are equivalent fractions three eight one half, one eighth, they're all fractions. Remember to add fractions with the same denominator. You cannot add fractions when they have different denominators. So one eighth is smaller than three eighths. Three eighths is larger than three, than one eighth. And if you created a number line, you could easily see that 1 8 is smaller because it would be 0, 1 8, 2 8, then 3 8, and then you keep going. 4 8, which is still equivalent to a half, 5 8, 6 8, 7 8, and then you'll get all the way to 8 8, which equals 1 whole. Thank you for listening. Fractions are everywhere.